So now that we've looked at strong acids, we can take a look at the weak acids. So again, weak acids are things that don't dissociate completely, they only partially dissociate. So depending on their Ka value, you can see um, how strong of a weak acid you have. So you can see, um, so the Ka again tells you, you know, how many products are you going to make, essentially, or how far to the right does the reaction go. So the bigger Ka's are up on top and the smaller ones are on the bottom. And so you'll, you'll, you don't have to memorize any of these Ka's, um, but in this chart they just give you the name, um, the structural formula, what the conjugate base is going to be, and then if you don't want to write that out every single time or try to figure it out, you can write the generalized acid ionization or dissociation, uh, where just HA just means an acid, so it's an acid with hydrogen out in front. This is for a monoprotic acid, we'll do polyprotics in a little bit and then it dissociates into A minus, and you always make hydronium. So whenever you have an acid in water, you're going to make hydronium. Hydronium is one of your products. Whoops. Now, uh, you can write the Ka expression. There you go. Remember, you don't put water in because water is a liquid. Um, so let's try one of these problems. So if you're looking at Ka, it's an equilibrium constant, you might be thinking, oh my gosh, ice tables. Yes, we're going to go back to ice tables. And so we have this reaction here. This is formic acid, and they say a student prepared a 0.1 molar solution of formic acid. And the pH was found to be 2.38. Calculate the Ka. So the first thing I kind of want to do here is write the Ka expression. Okay, so the Ka expression looks like products over reactants. So you can write that too. There we go. That is our Ka expression. And that's what we're trying to find. We don't know what that is. Sometimes they'll give you the K and you're solving for equilibrium constants, or sometimes they give you um, the equilibrium and you're solving for the K. So in this problem, they give you initial, right? So we have our initial conditions. And then they're going to give us something else. So they give us this pH. pH we can use to find the equilibrium concentration of the hydronium. So you want to set up your, your ice table the way we did in the last chapter. And initially, we have a 0.1 molar concentration. We don't have any products. Um, since this is all 1 to 1 to 1 to 1, I subtract 1x on that side. I'm going to add x on this side. You guys should be experts with ice tables by now. So I have 0.1 minus x and x and x. Now, if I had the Ka, I could just plug this bottom row into this expression and solve for x. But in this problem, we're trying to find the Ka, which means we must already know x. And so when they give you the pH, that's really like giving you the equilibrium hydronium concentration. And so, well, a way to find that. So if they, to find hydronium, and that's the equilibrium, whenever they give you the pH, think about it as the equilibrium pH. That's 10 to the negative 2.38. So this is how you can find the equilibrium concentration of hydronium, because if you know pH, you know hydronium. If you know hydronium, you know pH. That's the only part that we're really adding on to in this chapter. We made ice tables before. Now all we're doing is adding this pH part to it, and that's related to the hydronium concentration, which is one of your equilibrium concentrations. So 10 to the negative 2.38 is 0.0042. That equals x. So that's right here. This is 0.0042, and this is 0.0042, and this is going to be 0.1 minus 0.0042. So you can take all of those equilibrium concentrations there and plug them in up here. And so in order to find the Ka, let's switch colors here. So our Ka. Oh, our Ka is going to be um, 0.0042 times 0.0042. Just plugging that in, divided by, on the bottom I have my 0.1 minus 0.0042. And so when you work all that out, you solve for a Ka of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. So Pause the video, confirm that that's true, and then you can move on. Um, and so this problem was they give you an initial and they give you equilibrium, you solve for Ka. We'll do another one where they give you initial and K and you solve for equilibrium. And then once you know the equilibrium concentration of hydronium, then you can get to the pH out of that. 
Um, one other thing related to this problem is you can calculate the percent ionization. Percent ionization is pretty much how much does this acid ionize. And the way you can figure that out is your X over your initial concentration, or your equilibrium hydronium concentration, which is equal to X, divided by whatever you started with, times 100. And let's see. So let's look at that percent ionization for this problem. So our equilibrium here is 0 0.0042 divided by our initial which was 0.1 and then times 100 gives us 4.2 percent. So 4.2 percent ionized is not really that much. Um, if So that, that means that that x is really small compared to what we started with 0.1. It, it hardly ionizes at all and so we're going to, in the next problem that we're going to see, we're going to use this percent ionization to figure out whether or not we can, we can make an approximation that says the, the x, that change, is so small compared to whatever we're starting with that it's essentially the same as the, the initial concentration. So you'll see what I mean by that when we do the next problem. So in this problem, so they want us to calculate the pH this time, and they give us an initial concentration, and they give us the K. So this is one where they give us um, initial and K, and they want us to solve for the equilibrium. And then once you know the equilibrium concentration, uh, you can get the pH out of that. So again, we're going to make an ice table. Um, so we have our ice table. Here. And we also want to set up our Ka expression, because that's always important. So that's just the products. Hydronium. We don't need this pathway anymore. Over our initial. Okay, and so our initial um, concentration here is 0.3, and we don't have any of this, so we're going to subtract, and add, and add, and then we have 0.3 minus x, x, and x. Now, since they gave us they gave us the Ka, we can take this bottom row and we can plug it into our Ka expression, and we can say, all right, and our Ka is 1.8. Times 10 to the negative 5 is equal to all this stuff. So x times x, which is just x squared, over 0 0.30 minus x. And now you're looking at that thinking, oh no, we're going to have to do the quadratic. Well, quadratic sucks. Nobody wants to do the quadratic equation in order to solve this. But if we didn't, the problem is really this x on the bottom, right? That x is in the way. If that wasn't there, if we could just magically get rid of that x and say that x is so small compared to my initial concentration, this problem gets a lot easier because then I just have to multiply the 0.3 by the 1.8 and then take the square root of both sides and I've got x. So let's make that approximation. Let's say that that x is so small compared to 0.3 that it doesn't really matter. That 0.3 minus something really, 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 really small is just 0.3. And we're going to make that approximation, then we're going to check it. It's always good to check that. So if you're, if you're not into making approximations, but you're totally into the quadratic, then go for it. You're always ready to use the quadratic equation. This will just save you some time. So what we're going to do is ignore that x and just say, no, don't ignore this x. But only when you're adding or subtracting, you're comparing it to some other number. We're going to say that 0.3 is so much bigger than, than whatever this change is that we can get rid of it. And I can do that because if you look at this Ka, this is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That's a really small Ka. That means this reaction doesn't go very far in the forward direction. It means these x's are going to be really small. So that's why I can get away with it. I can, appro I can, I can approximate it, but I'm always going to check it. And the check is that you want to make sure that this percent ionization is less than 5%. So when we did this percent ionization over here, we're going to check it again after we make the approximation and then see if we were right. So we can finish up this problem here. We have 0.3 times 1.8 times the negative 5, and that equals x squared. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. I solve for x, and I get x is equal to something, 0 0.0023. OK, and that is not really our final answer. Um, that's our hydronium concentration, and then we can find the pH from there. pH is just negative log of that, 0 0.0023. And so our pH ends up being, does our pH end up being 2.63? So 
somewhere around there. And then you want to check. Let's do our check to make sure our approximation was okay and our calculator percent ionization. And that's just going to be the X, the 0 0.0023 divided by our initial 0 0.0023 divided by our initial concentration, 0 0.30 times 100. And for that, you get 0.77%. Uh, so that's really, really small. As long as it's less than five, the approximation is okay. So we can use it. So and the approximation is this part where we get rid of the X.